first of all, I want to thank uh, the organizer and uh, invite me to give a talk here. It's a really lovely meeting. And actually, I'm, uh, my background is in material science, and, uh, and, and now I'm doing chemistry. And this really is uh, it's a nice experience to come here, join you guys uh, doing aging. So my work starts from here. I think, uh, yes, many people have sort of saw this uh, watch this movie a long time ago. It's a pretty old movie. And uh, actually, my first time watching the movie is uh, 20 years after the movie was uh, up. This, this movie starts from uh, what was up. It's uh, 1966 and I saw it in 1986. So say this movie is talking about make a nano machine is a submarine to a cure a patient. So they talk and buy a soy uni spine. So this person you know, have a lot of blocks block clocks on the brain and then so these guys secure this. And this is uh, many years the scientific uh, uh, dream we have. So now what I'm doing is uh, somehow close to that. It is still pretty far, so we call it nanosams. So nanosam is, uh, is a, have a core of nanoparticle and the surface part of have a bunch of uh, uh, function groups. And uh, this function group, uh, one is the uh, composition and the distance between this, uh, com uh, these uh, function groups is uh, in the right pattern and uh, will generate a uh, cooperative effect. And, and then, so today we'll demonstrate the cooperative effect for collectively uh, degree RNA in a sequence specific function, uh, fashion. And as so I say, from nano research, I think much of you guys may not know the part of giving a general introduction, which is the nano research. And before I go that part, so I say we're doing drugs. Right? The type of drug we have, well, number one, small molecule drug. So say this is a very famous drug. So say we get a number of tries ones. Like, and then it goes a little bit larger. And uh, so say polymer drugs and the interference, we just talk in the morning, and a bunch of people on the top of this. And then uh, you have a larger is ribosome, nice RNAs, and this is the number prize winning drug, and another one is uh, also is a number winning, more than prize winning, is related to uh, drug molecules. And uh, so say, when we go to a larger drug, is the nanoparticle drug, what we have so far is uh, the virus. But people now, as so a researcher, use the virus and uh, to introduce like uh, isRNA or the ribosome or to follow the gene therapy. This is one thing, the leading virus and how uh, implications uh, afterwards. And uh, another part of uh, nanoparticle like stuff is uh, it's non virus, non leading. So say it's like uh, liposomes and a particle, not you know, not the particles, and uh, it's basically drug delivered vehicles. And the other part is to say a new branch of the drugs that we call the artificial cellular machinery. So say these are cool non we develop, and uh, so say or the non or in them, uh, not a complex system and then develop the other groups. And then why we want to develop the nanoparticle based enzyme? This part is uh, one the size of particle much big and much larger than in video small molecules and larger than polymers. You say they have size, shape, and charming density, bonding affinity, and, uh, and then many of the other properties will change dramatically. And uh, uh, an important advantage for this nanoparticle drugs is we can easily introduce multiple functions. So say drug can do multiple things. So this is the one way, the good thing, another way is that like we discussed in the beginning of the year in Singapore, you say, if you have introduced multiple functions, it's very difficult to get the drug proof. Because uh, one function it takes about five, ten years to get FDA approved, so you have two functions it takes forever. So say that is the one thing. But, but then I believe in the future have to go through a much more multifunctional drugs. And, and then say these drugs will show up a special stability in the 
in, in, inside the block flows and, and I have special diffusion coefficient. So say these properties make this drug unique. And uh, so say the development of another part of the drug back to very long time ago, so say this you know the modern science from uh, from England actually is so Michael Faraday, the first person to use the modern methodology to make a gold colloid. And uh, and then to say and then the real starting part for the real modern one is uh, it started from the United States in nineteen sixty eight. It's uh Feynman so they make statements to so say there are plenty of room at the bottom. So the starting part of our technology you're talking about mixing small and small, we see different. He, he don't know he is he, he, he is the is the physicist, he saw if we get things small, we, we could see a bunch of uh, unique properties that say if this is shrinking the size of small. So one size of particle small material small, what are we going to have? Say one thing is you can easily generate different colors. So this is a size and shape composition dependent property for nanoparticles. Another thing is you can say even more amazing. So if you use the one material, just shrinking the size, they have different colors. So this is a literally coming from a quantum confinement effect. So when the size of particles is close to the diameter of uh, the the axiton radius, and, and that's what we associate the emission of the particles, the emission color for the particles, the kind of solenoid signal change. So the unique properties for many young and young crystals. And uh, so these particles, because it's unique fluorescence, uh, and then we can easily generate many unique labels in the cosmic schools, let's say, from nearly fried to the Visible and invisible part, and uh, and then we can generate multiple markers and to label multiple model, m multiple targets. One unique part is to compare with to compare with the uh, organic molecule is this is a typical fluorescence molecule, uh, so say organic molecule fluorescence, right? And and then compare to another crystal, but then here is spectrum is narrow than this emission spectrum. And then, so excitation spectrum, this is a uh, non crystal, it's continuous. This is uh, a separate, this is only narrow. As a consequence, so you can use one laser to read all these uh, labels simultaneously for non crystal for the dyes, but you have to use multiple lasers to increase the complexity of reading setups. So, this is the one advantage. Based on advantages in my field, so with non particle based labeling, you can do many things like the cellular, uh, cell culture label, labeling, and then it's the invable labeling. This is uh, the label of the uh, embryo of uh, frogs, and uh, to study to say how the cell differentiate, and, and then the ending that stage to a small frog, and then so we can use a new type of uh, so it's a frog technology to. Uh, so say to distinguish uh, the size, actual distance between the two receptors, and then so we can develop a more sensitive, so INR imaging contact regions, and uh, on the other part, the metal part of the surface can create a magic effect. One of the effect is let's say plus molecular color change significantly. So one. One is a uh, DNA processing, the two parts of the gather generate a color change. Another unique thing is it's even more magic compared with uh, organic molecules. So say if you label the organic on the surface of gold particles and uh, and then compare the dye labeled organic ties, and then you found the melting point here is much sharper compared to here, right? And uh, and then as a consequence, taking advantage, you can easily to distinguish single base pair mutations. Right? So say in this case, you can easily tell the difference. But for organic dye, you can tell, but it's not dramatic, right? The major thing is coming from so when you label organic molecules here is organic DNA organic ties, you can increase the target selectivity. You can also increase the bonding affinity to targets. So
So this is why you can easily distinguish this changing from here. I can say here is the target from G to A. And uh, you can easily tell the difference between here. But uh, for the die label case, does not work that way. So all these non-materials generate a bunch of magic uh, properties associated with size and the shape. So we need to have much better control in, than the case that in microfarad we have done 150 years ago. So we need the size the distribution less than 5% or even narrow. And the surface distribution is much better. Shape distribution is much better. This all associate the fun control of the synthesis of particles. So in my research group, what we do here is one of the things. Is that one thing is uh, control the number of nucleation growth and uh, make multiple, multiple component name structures, uh, super crystalline particles, and uh, here is uh, the surface functionalization of the number of persons in my research group to do. And uh, today I want to primarily focus on this part. But before I go, I'll give you a general a short introduction. What do we do? How to control the size? What do we mean? So number one is how to make particles have better a nice uniformity. And you have to control the nuclei number precisely during that growth. And sometimes you can use the bubbles. It's really interesting. So you can just use bubbles, bubbles from uh, same bubbles to from the one with Jim the beers. So once you have a bubble, you generate particles with really uniform, right? So and here, take out bubbles, you can have particles up here. So say this is telling us that say the chemical precise the phenomenon for particle formation is not simple. It's uh, really complex and really fragile. A simple bubble can affect the nucleation dramatically. Another part is uh, our research is uh, making things uh, have more complexity. So say it's not same material, not single materials, multiple materials. So what's unique for the multiple materials is uh, we can use one material to use one excitation laser and uh, we can pump up uh, different colors just simply depending on different uh, intensity of excitation light. So that unique thing is coming from this near structure have two emitting uh, channels, let's say one is faster, one is slow, and uh, you can use the light excitation to tune the emission rate between the two channels and, uh, and, and the color. Chain. The unique point is you can easily distinguish this label or it's from a uh, background when we go to, let's so say, it's a single organic attack detection or a single protein detection. So we can use a single particle to do a label because we can easily to tell this one has unique property changing color. The ones in background, in the solid background, full of, they have fluorescence, but those ones do not change color, so I can have color. This is an important part. Another thing is uh, we can do is uh, in my group is uh, making things uh, assemble to a normal object we call the uh, one thing is uh, even Florida object UFO. And uh, so say we can, we can make the light here is uh, is called a double drum cylinder and then here is a really long assembly. ways. So each of them have unique properties. For instance here to so say this one. So it's going to be a next generation for the uh, polarized emitting LEDs in the background. This is the one thing. Before I go to uh, under this part, I'll go back to what we're going to talk today. So another part of the measure of my research work is uh, dealing with the surface of particles. Yeah, a bunch of properties can be controlled by the surface of particles. <coughs> And, uh, and then to say a question is uh, how can we create cooperativity between the ligands? And let's uh, say here, so we have a particle, and then we can put the many <coughs> ligands as we want. And let's uh, say one thing is uh, the major hypothesis we want to make is uh, so one we control the pattern, patterning is component in precise space or perhaps uh, in time and, uh, and the cooperativity can be created. So this is, a, this is basically mimic nature to so say cooperativity is uh, essential for biology, so say. So here is a cellular is a is a cell and then to so say 
The cell is a system far away from thermodynamic equilibrium. And let's just say, basically, it's a chaotic effect. It's a bunch of molecules. We saw this in pattern, but then it's a controlled by grounding motion. It's random moves. And the random, basically, it's order of cells are generated by random. And then, or to say, it's a chaos movement of the molecules generate the order. This one needs energy input, to say, like we have to eat food every day. That's the how to be is the energy input to create this, uh, this structure. So <laughs> in this case, is uh, to say this pattern style how to be close enough in a particular order in time and space. So another example to say is uh, a specific example. So it's a uh, it's a ribosome. Ribosome say is two major parts. I think you guys know much more than what I know. So say what well, so here is is that one part is the bind. Mitochondrial RNA, and then let's say the other part, sorry, so here. This is a larger subunit bond here, and then so this is two, it's a, in a quarterly fashion, and then so you can synthesize the proteins from here, pipelines from here, one by one, and so it come to be. It's entirely have to be from random movement of uh, these uh, ATP molecules reaction. And, uh, and, and, and then to 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 be is an ordered reaction of uh, physics of polypeptides. So this is come from uh, exactly quadratic effect between multiple components. And uh, another thing is uh, we want to target is to learn from nature is the RNA interference. Another machinery to say is the RNA induced silencing complex. So this is silencing complex can do it is that can. Degree RNA selectively cut in half, right? And uh, so, what do we do here is to mimic structure. So, in the surface of particles, we put is RNA A. So it's really robust enzyme. So you can degree RNA not sequence specifically really quick. And uh, then put D all the nicotines. Because the two species have no reaction. And, uh, and then so they were asking questions that can we have uh, a <coughs> quality function. So this is similar to, the structure is very close to, the structure is very close to Rex. Right, so Rex have uh, one part is RNA. <coughs> and the recognition group, the other part is RNAs. And here we have is, uh, we have, well, this is the recognition group, the RNAs. And, uh, and then in our case, we can put uh, as much as we can have in the small, is uh, like five to 13 number of particles that we need to show. We can put a lot of uh, RNAs and a lot of particles. And so it's all going to get high. We can have, we factor it much better to so say efficiency as compared to rats. And another problem for rats is to say, why we're targeting here to say there are a bunch of things. Delivery is a major problem. So say, although so say, RNA, other, I mean, so say RNA, <coughs> RNA interference get no price, but many, many of the drug companies put a lot of money and then suddenly they realize it's not so quick. For instance, Merck, this is say, in, in three years ago, it's partially quick from this uh, project to the, the RNA and the RNA interference. Another thing is coming from uh, potential toxicities and the side effect from this uh, RNA interference. So this is because it's uh, a RNA interference drug, so like SRNA use nature occurring machinery. And those are the machinery to so say used by, you know, so say a typical biological process we use in cells. If you hijack the stuff, you will have a problem. And uh, Another thing is can be easily inhibited by many, so say virals. So say for instance, uh, Hep C virals. So we're going to talk today, and HIV virals. So say from uh, evolution. So say these uh, thousand years evolution of the virals. So they have to, they already learned the technology or the tactics to against RNA. So, and in our case, we do not use. So say the machinery, we use nature machinery, you can easily bypass these, uh, you know, so the disadvantages compared to RNA, <coughs> RNAi therapies. And what we do here is uh, make the particles and then uh, try to work. And then we have pretty brief 
student is really brave. She says the field is from nothing, so we have that. And the idea for this simple was really difficult to put uh, this is a part of this in the time in the right way. Because many girls have tried before us, it's not work. And then this girl is just on my own work. And, uh, and then I have two postdocs working on the project I make before it's done. Oh, sorry, so they go too slow. Okay, I'm gonna go fast. So, <laughs> so, and, uh, to say that we chose the Hep C as a target, and it's really important variables because, in fact, a lot of people. And uh, then this is the Hep C, and that is we basically, this is RNA variables and targeting the ancient part. And uh, here's our design. And uh, this is the sequence here, so say I'll go a little bit faster, and uh, here's. So say it's, a, it's part of the project, I have a bunch of controls, and this is the measure RNAs, and then here is, uh, from here, it's telling us one thing. So say it's uh, here, in DNA, with, uh, with no enzyme, so say we can cover two parts. And, uh, and then they say it's, uh, it's very close, and this is no enzyme, so it's very close to this. Right? RNAs age, cover two parts, this RNA. This is uh, now that, right? And uh, then from this experiment, I'm telling us one thing. This is the opportunity comes from uh, number one, steroid tendency back to say because this is uh, this they high density oligonucleotides, and, uh, and then block the things the uh, non-specific bond got to get to here, and then to say it's colon we fight and then in addition to say specific bonding to oligonucleotide. It's, uh, I have to get the access to the surface of the uh, inverals and you can call them here. And this is this normal part of this particle base means that normal zone is really robust and can, you know, so it's against the ribosomes uh, degradation. So we try this results and, you know, so it's pretty mixed treatment and then and, and it's out of nowhere. So if you use the uh, RNSA, so it's uh, after the treatment here. So no idea response, and then here still mentioned response over here, really the last. And uh, and then to say we have a cell culture. So let me finish, and then we take the one. I'm sorry for this. And uh, then another thing is that we study the cellular take up experiment, and uh, then the major result here is I don't want to go here. One thing is how this uh, so now that I'm getting into getting inside the cells, basically, through the scavenger receptor. And uh, then we measure this, uh, you know, it's a uh, toxicity, you use the uh, MTSSC to say it's not toxic, and, uh, and then the results telling us it's not that it work perfectly. And it's in the cell culture, and then we go to the protein label, and this works. It's uh, consistent with the RNA label, it's a single cell label here, so it's, Certainly consistent. And then another experiment that we have done is uh, so the viral virus trigger the immune reactions into it. And uh, here is this marker from this experiment. So they use a specific RNA as a measure to say it's no immune reaction to be triggered. And then so say we finish uh, in this uh, more, mass model experiment. So say here is uh, we treat as a mass model. And uh, then the result come here. So this is uh, again to say it's the immune reaction, no immune reaction. And here I have a significant degradation of RNA for uh, three treatments in one way. Really specific and really potent effect. And it's much better, have a, have a much stronger effect as compared to cell cultures because this in the animal model have immune reactions, immune, immune system take part of major things and then uh, degrade RNA here. And although it's not toxic, and uh, but because we use a uh, gold particle here, may have a problem that we have uh, newer things so we can take off the pores and, uh, and then make it really fancy. So say, not, not working on a current way, so say, company called Nonsan Inc. And uh, so work with my group and develop this technology. And uh, so say, this is the conclusion. So say, basically, we have done this one. So say, cooperativity, <coughs> target selectivity, this part of our ongoing 
and the final legs of saying some my group, and then to say this is a postdoc working, this is another student working with part, this is among the fun, fun <coughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.